Hi everyone, it's Melissa from Welcome to the Woods. You might remember that last year I redid our porch, and that before picture sure was gnarly, but I fixed up a lot of the finishes to make it beautiful. Well now, thanks to our sponsor, Sumphi, we are going to get an addition that will make it even more versatile and enjoyable to be on the porch. Screens. A couple months ago, we had the installer Screen Mobile Minnesota come and measure our porch. We're going to get screens that are motorized to go up and down across the entire front of this beautiful space. So they came out and measured, and then we had to wait about six to eight weeks for manufacturing. In the meantime, I got the porch ready for install by priming these one by eight by 12 foot long boards. These are going to be added to the top of the porch railing because right now where the posts that hold up the porch meet the top bulkhead is very uneven. In order to install these motorized screens, I'm going to need to get wood added to all of the railing posts so that everything is completely flush and the screen rails can mount on and go up and down smoothly. So you can see this is the paint and primer I'm using. I use this throughout my project. Both are exterior and you can find both of them at the Home Depot. So I'll link them in the description below. Last year when I planked the wood ceiling, I just put this little corner piece of trim up, but now I have to remove that because the one by eight that I install up here is going to cover the edge of the wood ceiling anyway. So I'm just taking that down and then my husband had to help hold up the other side of these boards because they were really, really long. But what I ended up doing was kind of sliding them into place and then clamping them so that they were nice and tight against uh, what was currently there. To install all this extra lumber on the railing, I'm just using two and a half inch long finished nails and my rigid nailer. Some spots on the one by eight, I need to use my oscillating multi-tool to cut out notches to account for where like the post that holds up the porch would jut in the way. This was so annoying, but <laughs> um, just with some of these cuts and these little pieces that I took out, I was able to actually get this installed extremely flush to the bulkhead that was already on the porch. At this point, I wanted to address, I've been getting a lot of comments and stuff about people just asking me like how I'm feeling and how I can DIY while pregnant. And first of all, I want to say thank you so much for your consideration and compassion during this time. Um, I do feel well. My pregnancy is going smoothly and the baby is extremely healthy, um, but it's kind of surprising sometimes with <laughs> things like this to watch a pregnant lady do these projects. And soon I'll be entering my um, third trimester and I will need to slow down a bit, but I still have some big projects lined up for this summer. I'll just be enlisting the help of um, hired hands and friends a little bit more than usual. So look forward to some of that. Of course, our vinyl siding in the porch got installed before I was doing any of this work. So when I was adding more lumber to the edge, I had to again use my multi-tool to cut the like, I think it's called a J channel <laughs> that holds in the vinyl board and batten siding. Just cut it off a little bit there so that I could slide in the one by eight. And man, these multi-tools are very, very handy. So if you don't have one already, I have a recommendation for you in the description on this video. Go check it out. Now, the 6x6 posts that are holding up the porch ceiling also needed lumber added to them to be flush with the bulkhead. So I'm going to be making a cut here on my table saw I've never done before. I was very nervous about using my table saw this way, but um, I tried to do it as safely as possible. I am basically... Um, like book ending <laughs> this piece of one by six pine lumber. Um, this I'm using my gripper for to hold it against the rip fence on my table saw. And when I'm trying to slice this, you know, thickness wise, I'm not going to take it all in one pass. In fact, I think I did it in six passes going just slightly less than an inch deep each time. This was definitely a slow going process. You don't ever want to rush something like this, especially with a longer board. I think my board was eight feet long. And so I think each pass took like four minutes. We went very slow and careful. And then I held down on the top of the board as well to keep it against the table saw. 
unless you have a roller table the right height a uh, cut like this is very dangerous so you definitely want more than one set of hands my husband helped hold the other end of the board and balance it with me as we made this dangerous cut so the reason that I couldn't just shave down the thickness of the one by eight is because each of the posts on this on the porch didn't like match up with the bulkhead at the same depth so some of them were offset by half an inch some of them were offset by a quarter inch so that's why the two posts that I'm gonna need to like fortify for the screen railings one of them is off by half an inch and one is off by a quarter that's why I'm shaving down this one by six because each piece will be the thickness that I need. When I finally got done with all the passes to be able to break these two pieces of lumber apart, I was so relieved <laughs> and just kind of amazed actually that it worked. <laughs> so now I have a half inch thick one for one post and a quarter inch thick one for the other. Obviously they're each slightly less because you have to account for the kerf of the blade. So I did use a teeny bit of shimming just to get everything exactly as flush as I wanted. But in general, I was so, so happy with how this turned out. One of these boards needed like trimming along the edges too because the post I was putting it on had some imperfections. It wasn't a 90 degree angle. So I traced it and then followed the line with my jigsaw to get the cut perfect. And this little extension of lumber that I added to the post looks like you never would realize it wasn't part of the original. Before our new screens got installed, I wanted to make the posts and railing that were there much, much better because they had so many imperfections. So I decided to use wood filler. This exterior uh, Elmer's wood filler is something I've trusted in the past to not crack. It works pretty well. I filled some deep divots and holes along all the railing with like multiple layers of wood filler before sanding. So some of the porch posts look like this. They had cracks from the six by six settling and they had holes. So I filled everything and I just really wanted my post to look brand new and this porch to look really, really nice to match how nice the screens are gonna be. After that, several hours of sanding ensued <laughs> with my random orbital sander. And then finally, it was time to prime and paint. So again, I'm using the Kills primer and this exterior primer got put on all of the raw lumber that I added and then the spots where I did wood filler because I didn't want those spots of wood filler to have like a different sheen if I just coated them in one coat of paint. So the primer is gonna help with that and it's gonna even everything out. The paint I'm using is bare um, exterior stain blocking paint and primer in one in semi-gloss so it should be fairly easy to wipe down because of the semi-gloss finish. And I'm applying with a four inch mini roller. This is my preferred way to paint. It's really fast and the four inch roller was the perfect size for these posts and to get in between all the rails. Painting definitely took a really long time and I had to wait around a bit for the weather to warm up above 50 degrees. But fortunately, I got this all done in time for the screens to be installed. At this point in the video, I want to invite you guys, if you're not already, to follow me on Instagram because I share a lot more lifestyle stuff on that channel in my stories. I show behind the scenes of DIYs as I'm working on them and when the baby arrives and as we get closer, I'll probably be sharing a lot more like personal stuff and the baby name and announcement and things like that on my Instagram. So if you want to keep up with more of my personal life, then be sure to click the link in the description on this video to come follow me on IG. Finally, I had my porch post looking beautiful and perfectly flush as evidenced in this shot here. We could get the screens installed. Our installer was Screen Mobile, Minnesota, like I said. For the last 16 years, they've been run by this father and son team. So we've got Bill is the dad and Butch is the son. Both of them were funny and great to work with. I really trusted that they would install it correctly, um, although I tried to get in there and <laughs> help where I could. I probably shouldn't have. It's best to be left up to the professionals. But basically how it installs is that this metal housing here has the screen rolled up inside of it and it hooks onto metal brackets you screw into the bulkhead. And I chose to have mine mounted on the inside of the porch 
because I thought this would be best for like protecting it from weather, but these are meant to be outside and lots of people have them installed like on their garages or man caves, they said is also popular. So they set up scaffolding uh, to install and they also had sawhorses outside. Okay, they kind of laid everything out. This install took about uh, maybe six-ish hours. Here, Butch is cutting the aluminum rails along the sides. Each of them are about two and a half inches wide, and that's all it takes for the screen to be guided up and down smoothly. There's kind of like a, it almost looks like a zipper, but there's like a little guide along the edge of each screen that makes them fit into these rails perfectly. I'll show more about how the screens work in just a minute, but first I wanna mention that the other thing I had to fix up was the floor on this porch. Last year I painted this floor, but with water sitting here as well as the bed swing increasing traffic in this area, um, I don't think that the porch paint that I used adhered well enough and it was peeling up everywhere. So this time I'm going to be using a heavy duty filler primer and right now I'm just using a scraper and like a paintbrush tool in order to get up all of the loose paint. There was so much of it. It was very disappointing. but. Um, basically, when I was done with that, and ugh, messy, and I cleaned up all of the little paint chips, I used this filler primer. This is meant as like an automotive paint, but basically it's a buildable formula that allows you to kind of hide that you scraped off paint in some areas. It makes your paint job more level. Now, I protected the railing I just did with this cardboard and then sprayed it so I didn't have to like tape and bag everything off. This worked really slick. I was able to do a couple coats of this primer and when it was dried, I came in with paint. I am using the same porch floor paint just because I don't want to redo the entire floor. Um, hopefully it holds a little better with this primer underneath, but if not, then I might be looking at a more permanent solution in the future. Okay, so without further ado, here is our fully fixed up porch with our beautiful new screens. Now, if you've been following me a while, you know I live in Minnesota, and I feel like there are so many bugs throughout the summer. It gets really humid and hot here. These screens are going to make it so that this porch is so much more versatile. We'll be able to eat out here if we want without, you know, yellow jackets landing in our food. We'll be able to sit out here in the evenings without mosquitoes biting us, and we will be able to sleep on the bed swing, which my daughter is looking forward to so, so much. Now the coolest thing about these screens is you can stop them at any height. So all you need to do is use the remote. The remote that comes with has multiple channels and we had two separate screens installed. So we have one on channel one, the other on channel two. They don't move at exactly the same time, but you just, with the press of a button, you're able to move your screens up and down so you can have them down if you don't want the bugs or in the spring and fall when there aren't bugs, you can have them up and just enjoy your porch open. I like that we got two different screens because then we can use the, the smaller one as a walkway. On the bottom of the screens, there's like basically this broom type material. It's similar to the seal that you see on a patio door and it allows the floor, even if there's discrepancies in the height, to just be totally covered and safe from mosquitoes. So when it comes down, the screen accounts for our slightly uneven porch floor. This is how they go up and they roll right up into the housing mechanism at the top, which is very discreet and sleek. I'm really happy I did a white railing because it blends in beautifully. From the outside, you can see that since I mounted the screen mechanism on the inside of the porch, there is nothing visible. I really like actually how it looks. I was worried that it was going to look strange like a big black box, but it doesn't at all. The screens themselves have a lot of cool features and they were manufactured by a company called Stowit. You can find them in the link in the description on this video. Not only are they really tiny to prevent any bugs coming through, but they also have sunblocker that knocks out like 40% of the sun's intensity. So that is great for this porch because it actually is west facing. In the late afternoons, it gets really sunny and that can just kill um, that bright sun blaring into our porch, making us hot and sweaty where we can't then sit and enjoy, you know, the sunset or whatever else we want to do on the porch. You can also control the screens using your phone with the Sumphy MyLink app. 
To me, the major advantage of getting a motorized screen versus like a permanently installed version is that they're hopefully going to last a lot longer since we can roll them up during any terrible storms, hail, we can have them up during the winter when we're not even using the porch, and then they're just not weathered as badly, you know, like they're going to hopefully last because we'll be able to take care of them and protect them underneath our porch. Sometimes bugs do get caught in the screen or like little pieces of flying cottonwood or something in the air. Um, and I just cleaned it off easily with a rag. Um, you can do this since they go up and down at any height that's comfortable for you. You could also use a broom to clean them off, but it's really easy to care and maintain for your screens. They're very, very sturdy, so I have no worries about them getting broken by my children. Um, I also think that they would withstand a pet as long as your um, animal wasn't like scratching or like running full force through them. I really love how the screens look on the front of our house. It just makes the porch so much more beautiful, versatile, and enjoyable for our family. I want to give a huge thanks to our sponsor, Sumpy, who manufactures the screen motors. They're the best in the business, and if you want to find screens like this at a dealer near you, then follow the link in the description on this video, the Sumpy link to find a dealer. They are awesome. Thank you all so much for watching. Welcome to the woods. We will catch you again next time on my channel. I'm going to get started on our nursery next, so look forward to that next week.